Hello, innovators. I'm Todd Wyant, and welcome to the Bridging the Gap podcast presented by Applied Software. You're invited to join our MEP and construction innovation adventure with the mission to propel this great industry forward. My guest today is Cliff Cole, director of VDC at the Pinta Building Group. Cliff's primary focus is to leverage innovative technology solutions that improve efficiency, productivity, and enhance client focus within an enriching team environment. He was also named to Autodesk 40 under 40 in 2019. Welcome to the show, Cliff. Hi, thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Absolutely. The pleasure is all mine. Uh, so how did you get into the construction industry to begin with? Um, well, it's, it started uh, back uh, when I was growing up uh, in Baltimore, Maryland. I used to uh, go downtown, and at the time, I was um, watching the uh, Orioles Stadium being built, uh, their ballpark. Uh, yeah. and, and I was at a young age, uh, and so that was intriguing to me. Um, I, not, nobody in my family really works in the construction field, um, so I was always excited, interested in about how things got built. I used to love playing with Legos and and uh, other toys like that. So um, that kind of sparked my interest. Uh, then I went to college uh, and got an architecture engineering degree from North Carolina A&T State University. Uh, and at the time it was an architecture engineering degree and I thought I wanted to be an architect. Uh, and then halfway through uh, the curriculum, I decided I didn't want to be an architect. So uh, <laughs> I stayed, stayed the course, but I went with the construction right after college. Nice. Uh, so I have a ton of family that is is up in Baltimore. Uh, I've actually seen a game in that Oriole <laughs> Stadium too. It's a it's a cool stadium. It's a cool stadium. Yes, it is. <laughs> Especially back That's back. awesome. Pretty pretty innovative for, on the things they did, and they tied it back into the uh, some of the existing factories in that area at the time. So it was, it was just very very unique at the time. So. Yeah, that's awesome. What about that really gripped you as a kid? Um, I remember that it used to be like a, like it used to be an old dirt lot. You know, a parking lot, I think it was at the time, and, it, and there was a lot of uh, factory buildings um, in there. So and they, you know, I saw it from when they basically they demoed out the site and and they tied in the stadium to these uh, the old. I'm not sure what kind of factory it was, but it was a factory. And how the architecture came together, and just the, the innovation and thoughts, and, and you know, I used to see it every day, and they just see how it grows from you know, just, uh, dirt lot to start steel and concrete and, and masonry and then and then just you know being a young kid you know uh and, and being able to attend the game after that knowing that you know we, we stand we were standing we were standing on a on a dirt lot you know at one point in time and and all, all the people it took to create um create this experience for for the fans um which is exciting to me so and i always yeah. uh, just found that intriguing that's awesome uh so you've really have built a, a BIM department essentially from the ground up. Would love to start with kind of what are some of the, the challenges that you had to go through along the way in, in going through that process? So there was a, a lot of challenges. Um, <laughs> the, uh, you know, I, I, when I came back to uh, Penta Building Group here in, in Las Vegas, it was 2005 and and I was just excited to get into the industry and, and obviously work in, in, in a city like Las Vegas. Uh, and, and definitely a lot, a lot, a lot of challenges in general from that standpoint and working in a uh, 24 hour town and, you know, in, in the summertime with the heat and all, all these other different challenges that we had. So uh, for me, you know, it, it was one of those things where I had to learn the craft of, of the construction industry, specifically here in Las Vegas in this fast, fast paced environment. Um, but then at, at one point in time, we were, we were running so fast. It's like, how do we, how do we improve on what we're doing? Um, and so I had a uh, background in architecture engineering, as I mentioned earlier. And at this time, our IT director reached out to me and said, hey, we're well, looking at this new technology called BIM. Um, you know, I, I know you have a TAG background. Can you check it out and see what you think? And a couple of us uh, younger engineers at the time all kind of all jumped into it and it just kind of, and for me, it just gravitated toward it. It just made sense. And at the time, I had a product that, that needed the technology to kind of coordinate a very complex um, um, MEP systems and tied into an existing building, tied into an existing building, tied into a new structure that we just built, um, you know, landlocked on two sides. Uh, you know, inside, there was a lot of unique features uh, with uh, 
nightclubs and, and aquariums and restaurants and all this kind of stuff. So it was really just trying to figure out how do I how do I coordinate all this <laughs> all these systems coming <laughs> together. So um, was just talking to some of our trade partners at the time and said, hey, I'm, I'm building these models. Is something we can do to kind of help facilitate some of this coordination? And uh, then we just collaborate on that. And that's kind of how our BIM journey started uh, here at Penta Building Group. It, it was it was out of necessity, and, and it was just a lot of uh, nights and weekends learning how to use Revit uh, at the time. And uh, but I had some great trade partners that I worked with to kind of taught me some uh, the ropes on how things um, should be coordinated and how it, how we should model certain things, what, what's beneficial for each trade. Uh, and so you know that was just 2008 uh, at the time, and it was uh, it was exciting to be able to kind of see that product through and utilizing utilizing um, this new technology uh, at the time and from there it just exploded it was just uh hey can you do that thing you did on your other product on this new product over here and then yeah. it kind of just started expanding from there and, and i eventually uh, transitioned from being a product engineer to a um, bin manager uh, for the company nice so what kind of on the job training then went in that process uh, so it, it was exciting. It was, uh, it, you know, it, you know, it was a, I would say my day job was, you know, being out in the field, working with the, the trade workers, um, you know, pushing through submittals and RFIs with the design team. Uh, and then my night job, you know, from, from seven to nine would be, you know, cracking open the uh, Revit book and learning how to uh, utilize the technology. So, um, and it was, it was, it was exciting because I, I honestly, I didn't have the, idea of how to get started beyond just grab a book, went to a couple of training classes and that, that obviously helped, but it, it was really just on the job, grab a book and figure it out training. And uh, over time, you just kind of learn tips and tricks and, uh, and things that you can improve on to kind of utilize the technology, um, specifically on, on that, that particular project. Uh, and then, but moving forward, um, once I was, at, once I got past that product and was able to start implementing it throughout the entire company, that's kind of really when the learning took form. It's, it's how do you manage three, four, five products at a time with a mm -hmm. technology that's kind of innovative for us uh, to incorporate that into a project where teams aren't really familiar with how you use technology uh, to that level uh, and, then, and then make sure they're efficient at it <laughs> and do it yeah. in multiple different locations. It was a challenge. Um, but you know, um, uh, growing up, you know, you, my, I was always told if it doesn't kill you, make it stronger. So um, it was just a great experience to be able to go meet different people, work with different people of all different skill sets, um, backgrounds. Um, some people who've been in the industry for thirty or forty years, and you know, at this time, been on a, a cell phone um, to you know people who were straight out of college that that would just uh, gravitate toward technology. So that combination of working with all these different people kind of was part of the on-the-job training um, that helped me grow um, grow the department um, to what it is today. Um, but also it helped me learn how to be, um, you know, more innovative as far as um, being out being out there on the forefront of technology and process improvement, uh, being able to uh, develop a department from grassroots, um, and then to be, be a better leader um, as far as far as uh, the approach we're taking at the company. Yeah. So you, you mentioned that you were having to kind of coordinate between a, a lot of diverse backgrounds and experience levels. H how do you get everybody kind of moving in the same direction and at the same time having to learn new skills and software and just a whole new process? Oh, it, you know, I think I'm still trying to figure that out. But uh, <laughs> the, uh, the approach I took was, um, can, you know, just uh, communication. I uh, like to start. It starts with communication um, and having a you know a genuine interest in what um, that person is working on. Um, so if I'm walking the job site with a with a plumber, uh, you know to you know they when you ask questions, they just light up. Um, and, you know to be able to talk about their expertise and or their particular product that they're working on. Uh, and so to gain to gain the respect um, of them, you have to have. Um, where, you know, you have to give the respect to them. You have to show them empathy and, um, and, and support what they're doing so they can support what you're doing. And when you put the, you know, that, you know, the, I call them clients first um, to better understand what they're trying to achieve. And then you can tailor your, your pitch to them on new technology 
or a new process um, to show them the value and why this is important. So for our, for for me, it's been exciting. Like again, it allows me to just talk and and and, and connect with so many different people across the industry that honestly, if I didn't, if I wasn't in this role, I'm not sure if I would have ever met them. Uh, and that helped career, uh, helped, helped, you know, curve my career uh, and, and, you know, help me become a, a, a better um, BDC director. Yeah, for sure. So w- one of the things that I, I think is, um, brings up an interesting question for you is you mentioned really being able to connect with all those people and, and going around and really knowing their their needs and their wants and being able to communicate to that. How do you avoid kind of spreading yourself too thin in having so many people that you are trying to get to know the ins and outs of, you know, what makes them tick? Uh, <laughs> yeah. How, how do you make, how do you avoid spreading yourself too thin? Um, it took me a while to, to figure that out. That was the, you know, I, I worked a lot. <laughs> uh, I can no. imagine. Yeah, there's working. a lot of demands and needs on that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It, it, you know, you at the same time you're also trying to learn your job too. You know, uh, right? Uh, oh, you're really nice, but like, yeah, I, I just figured this out last week, so I'm not necessarily. Nice. <laughs> 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 so, um, but you know, I think initially it was it was you know getting the good foundation. Um, for me, that foundation was it was you know it's at first turned around just strictly technology. Um, but then as I, I grew in, uh, in my career, um, you know, I started, I started realizing that, you know, I had to gain other skill sets. I couldn't, I couldn't just be one dimensional. Um, so those skill sets, you know, were uh, how to plan better, how to uh, communicate in writing, um, how to, um, you know, how to, how to look at a process, figure out how to, you know, what, what improvements can it take? Is it, is it technology? Is it just, um, you know, uh, standards that need to be set? So. That took some time um, over the course of my career, um, and then from there, um, you know, I had to, have, you know, for the first four years, I think I was a one person in the main department, um, and then realizing that okay, I probably need some help, you know, <laughs> so I probably need to probably hard think about growing this department. Uh, unfortunately, I was, you know, I had the support of our executives at the time, so yeah, you know, that's that, that's a good idea. Um, feel free to go find, you know, uh, employees. So. Yeah, I actually had to turn put on my uh, HR hat, which again I had no clue how to do or, <laughs> or anything as far as recruiting or putting together a job description or anything like that. So um, you know, going back to the, going back to my experience with uh, learning and Revit, just kind of Google and grab the book and just kind of had to learn the process of how all that works. So you know, made job description and processes and. Started hitting the uh, hitting the road, going to college campuses, and and, and that experience was just tremendous. And it, it opened me up to, um, you know, again a whole other world that I just I wouldn't have never experienced. I think if I just uh, took the traditional construction uh, engineer route. Um, but you know, and it's it's also made me have to get outside my comfort zone, right? You know, naturally I would say I'm an introvert. I don't, you know, enjoy this kind of standing in front of people and talking and <laughs> stuff like that. So. It was something that I had to strategically think, okay, how am I going to approach this? How am I going to do this? Um, and then uh, it went, you know, it took a, you know, I, I have a saying to my group, I say, you know, you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. And for me, it took you know, a couple of years if I'm out and really just say, you know, accept that for what that is and, and, and try to, yeah. uh, and try to, you know, not improve on that constantly throughout, throughout the time. So uh, now I just, you know, it's kind of, you know, Part of just the maturation and growth, I think, it is when you come up in your career. So um, that's how, you know, for, for going back to it and then department, we've gotten up to an eight person department. So uh, and that's been exciting. Um, then the other aspect, you know, in, in here in school, they don't teach you know how to be a manager. So, <laughs> so now <laughs> like, hey, I got to learn a whole nother skill set that wasn't really, you know, taught. Uh, and so management, you know, so, uh, leadership, urban leadership, you know, and then kind of lead, lead, led me toward kind of this. A lean initiative that we're uh, you know we have in our company now and uh, process improvement and and so I would say over the, I mean just over the past you know, I've been in this role specifically for probably for about eleven years now and I probably I've learned so much I've I learned uh, I learned stuff about myself that I didn't know I had the capability of doing um, I, I I I you know 
I just, I've never would thought have been on a podcast. Now this is something you know that I, you know I, I didn't do in 2018. <laughs> so so <laughs> it's uh, it's been exciting uh, um, to, to have opportunity like like this and to talk with you, Todd. And uh, but yeah, I think you know for me the excitement is just you never you know I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly learning. I learn something every single day. Um, Technology is constantly changing, so you got to constantly stay up on on onto that. You know you have employees that have different needs and thoughts and, and diverse ways of thinking. So you got to be able to figure out how to communicate with each individual um, as an individual and not just kind of um, group them in, in, uh, um, as a whole. Uh, and that way they feel like they are appreciative and they, and they, and they want to, you know, because it's, you know, recruiting is hard. Um, retention is, is just as hard, uh, and, 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 but it's a, it's a vital part of developing and growing a, a department. Uh, to make mm-hmm. sure each of your employees are happy, make, make, make sure each of your employees are challenged, um, and, and they have their, they're, they're able to reach their full uh, potential. Uh, and for me, I, I take it as, a, as an honor to be able to, to uh, you know, work with each individual. Uh, and I learn just as much from them <laughs> as I think they, they learn from me. So, and we challenge each other. So it's, it's, a, it's, a fun, it's a fun environment to be in, and we try to make it as fun as possible because the work is challenging. You know, you, you have deadlines and design changes and clients expectations are, are, are you know, increasing. Um, and so you have to kind of always level up um, um, with, with, with the expectations and the competition. So it's, a, it's been exciting to also to be able to reach out to, over the years, I've met so many great people uh, in this industry uh, just by going to conferences and and you may not remember exactly what their name are, but you know their faces as soon as you see it. <laughs> yeah. You know that you know you know their 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 family uh, uh, um, background or where they're from, or, and so it's been exciting to be able to learn from those people as well. Um, and there is a there's a tremendous amount of people. Uh, and I remember a, uh, a a podcast I was listening to, and uh, um, and it was mentioned that you know we have like these six degrees of separation amongst all the people that we know in the industry. It really is a small. Um, industry and there's been some tremendous people that have helped me get to here and, and I learned a lot from them. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I think from all, all that, I, there's two kind of commendable attributes that I, I picked up from you. One is you have a, a great agility to adapt and, you know, just kind of move around as needed. And then a curiosity for learning, which has really seemed to serve you well. Yeah, it's and it's uh, and I, I would say that you know this is not wasn't natural for, uh, for me <laughs> by any means. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we talk about it a lot in, in, internally, um, but if you're if, you know the thing I've learned from you know just leadership is setting setting vision um, and, and, and 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 having having vision and setting direction. Um, so once I kind of put my mind to something, now I'm like, okay, I'm going to change that. Now I just got to figure out how I'm going to go about doing it. And I think again, from experiences, from starting from scratch, with, hey, what is what does BIM stand for, and how, and where how does Revit even fit into that? To you know, hey, we got to put together a strategy for the entire company, and, and now we're trying to you know we're, we're going to increase market share in, in certain areas of, of the regions that we're looking at. You know, how do we fit into that piece, and how do we um, overlap with the different departments? And uh, and so for me, you know, we work. Uh, we are officially under our pre-construction department, but we work actively with our operations team. I work, I work closely with our IT department. I work closely with our process improvement and training um, HR departments. Uh, I work with our accounting department. So, uh, and uh, safety, quality, all, uh, you know, I touch a lot of different um, parts of the company, uh, and that's that has grown, um, and that's been um, some of the excitement that we've seen over the years on so, uh, how does this, how do we go from a building information and modeling just Revit to building information modeling as a process to virtual design and construction as a management philosophy and skill um, to be able to support uh, different um, uh, sec- uh, more, um, areas of the company like quality, like safety. Um, how do we tie in IT? How are we, how are we pushing out um, innovative mobile solutions that help improve not just uh, virtual design and construction, but uh, improve you know, everything in the company? So, it's uh, it's been exciting. <laughs> it's been exciting. Yeah. It's been a, a lot of work, um, but I, you know, tell people all the time I wouldn't change it uh, for the world. It's been it's been uh, uh, exciting, uh, and in the future, it's going to be exciting to see what um, what's next. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, through all those transitions that you you've gone through, and 
those steps that you just laid out with, you know, figuring out BIM to becoming a, a full VDC department, all that requires a pretty radically different thought processes in each of those phases of growth. Uh, do you think you were able to kind of recognize those mental shifts in the moment or is it looking back that you can see, oh yeah, that's where I had to change there. Like were you, do, were you in more of a, like a, a proactive stance through it or just kind of adapting on the fly in, in real time? Uh, in the beginning, it was adapting on the fly. It, it was, <laughs> you know, it probably be a little slow to, to adapt, to be honest with you. Um, but, you know, I think as, as I I've advanced and I've, I've gone through this, uh, these transitions and, 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 and the growing and being flexible um, and, and capabilities and, and expectations. I think we, you know, you have to, now it's easier for me to recognize, um, you know, and, and foresee, be proactive with uh, um, what's coming up, what we need to do, how do we need to adapt? To, uh, I mean, you know, we weren't, mm -hmm. um, we were, you know, we weren't uh, as proactive, you know, say with the pandemic hit, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> well, that would be hard to be proactive <laughs> with that. <laughs> um, but we were quick to adapt. We, quick, we knew what we needed to do. We, we, we you know, we, um, uh, you know, we, uh, working from home, kind of make that shift real fast. We had good dialogue already. Um, we've had, we have um, VDC uh, team members in different regions. So we were already comfortable working with, um, you know, a Slack, uh, you know, um, uh, and, or Teams, or and, or working collaboratively online, or, or jumping into product that you, you haven't started, or jumping out. Um, so we've already kind of grown through that over the years. Um, so when the pandemic hit, it did. It wasn't a huge transition for us from, from that standpoint. And going through things like you know the uh, you know the Great Recession <laughs> in two thousand eight, and, uh, and 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 other you know shifting and moving into. Um, for us, we're a, a regional company. Uh, we're in the Southwest, in Southwest. So, being first locally, just to Nevada, and then kind of um, setting roots in, in California, and then reestablishing roots in Arizona. All of that is part of the you know the flexibility that not only does the company um, have to do, but obviously we are uh, engaged in that and have to be uh, right alongside them as well. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, so I, I want to circle back on something that you mentioned a couple of minutes ago, and that you have your hand in a, a lot of different uh, departments and conversations as well, too. How'd you go about building that credibility for that to take place that people really saw VDC as an important contributor in those different conversations? Um. So it's funny. I, that's a great question. I have to I have to look at something real fast because I sent uh, I try to send motivational messages to my team every Monday to kind of get them get them going. You know, yeah. I pulled that from my uh, days of playing sports in high school. And um, one of the messages uh, the message this uh, Monday was the distance between your dreams and reality is called action. So uh, I guess related to your question, how do you how do you establish uh, that rapport you, you know you you can have an idea and that's one of the things I think we've done a lot here in VDC is to have a lot of great ideas we, mm -hmm. we see something we think something and then the question quickly shift uh, how do we make this reality how do we make this something mm -hmm. that we can it's tangible that people see value uh, and then so you have to start strategizing and it's uh you know we have the saying um, you know we don't fail we learn so you have to learn how to iterate and so and keep going and trying and, and then every time you do something you learn something new about what works or what doesn't work um so taking that same mentality from bdc and so like right now we you know i i chair our diversity committee so it's like okay shifting shifting thoughts again how do we how do we get our diversity committee up and running it's already been going i'm taking over uh, from our executive the director of hr like okay what what where are we at today what do we have to do to get this to the next level? Um, how does that look like? So a lot of it's research. So right now, um, taking a certification course in diversity and uh, equity and inclusion to kind of get my education and knowledge on what that looks like and how that is, then figure out how to take that knowledge and incorporate it into our company. Uh, how do we build culture? How do we, how do we engage people? Uh, how does uh, emotional intelligence fit into all of this? Uh, we know what does unconscious bias look like and how do we make people recognize it? I mean, take, you got to take all these concepts yeah. And boil it down to something that's simple that people can understand and you can communicate to them to give them actionable goals to try to achieve. Right. That's a, 
easier said than done too because there's some some big concepts to <laughs> <laughs> boil down simplistically <laughs> yeah and, and you know most people don't understand that it, it, it's, just, it's just not intuitive to them so um at times it's education it's it's uh you know, what that means what does it look like uh and for me it's always you know i try to start with what's the problem that we're trying to solve right everybody can communicate to them what they like or potentially what they don't like so you, you know but so engaging those kind of conversations with our employees understanding their pain points. Um, so similar to that come from the background of construction, our, our principals of our company always tell me that, you know, you know, you gotta you gotta dig for the bones, which means he was always he's trying to say you gotta find a problem before they become problems. Uh, and that kind of just gravitates with me if everything I do. Okay, we're, we're trying to innovate, we're trying to improve something. Um, we have to figure out what we're trying to solve. How does this solve a problem? Does it make it is it is it make it better? Does it make it worse? Um, you know, are we, are we, you know, what's the value? People understand value. So if you can communicate that to them and what's, you know, kind of what's in it for them, um, that makes the conversation a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I, I love the quote that you used to that we, we don't fail, we learn. Yeah. And I think taking that kind of stigmatism out around failure, because that, that's what it is. You learn something that not to do and hopefully in that you learn something that you should do next time that you didn't do uh and I, I think that's that's huge nobody likes to fail especially in construction that's a that's a bad four-letter word <laughs> uh, so i think taking it the stigmatism out of how, how did what did you learn about it going through that that process and what can you do better next time is is a really healthy approach yeah, and I think you know, grew up in the industry. Uh, I was, you know, same way. Like, yeah, you don't, you don't talk about anything bad. You don't say, you know, you fail. I mean, it was, it was a bad word. You're, you're absolutely right. And so, um, as part of this, part of the, you know, I would say, transformation within the VDC department, we had to do things a little bit differently. You know, think outside the box. Uh, so, and part of that is, hey, you know, we have to have a glass fast, glass half full mentality. Um, cause that's how we want to be innovative. Cause when people say we can, we got to say we can. Um, and then for us, it, it, it's, it's a mindset and it takes time to gain that mindset. You know, no, no different than it takes time to, you know, lose weight from a diet floor and playing <laughs> or, yeah. or another well, it's a muscle. You have to work it out. You got to work it out. You're right. It's exactly. That's, that's exactly what it is. And, and, and at first, it, you know, when I, when I communicate it like to our team members, they look at me like I'm a little crazy. Um, but <laughs> over time, you know, it's like, hey, this is what we're trying to accomplish. You know, how did you feel in that particular area? And it's a situation where something didn't go right. And then we talk through those things and, and it's a dialogue and say, hey, now let's let's shift our mindset a little bit and let's approach it from this standpoint. Um, that's, you know, those things, again, all these things are skill sets I kind of had to learn. I, I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, uh, it wasn't natural for me, for sure. It, it was something that, you know, just learning the learning about myself, um, and, you know, being self-aware uh, or concepts that, uh, you know, just, it was, it was, it was interesting. It was just very interesting to me. I went to, when I went to one of my first STEM conferences and they started talking about communication and, and collaboration and all this other stuff and, and emotional intelligence and, and self-awareness. And I'm like, I, I thought I was gonna learn about technology and software. And, <laughs> and, what's all this? this <laughs> what's all this, right? <laughs> so I had to go back and, and do some, and do some research, and I'm like, oh, just, you know, just, it's much more than just technology. You know, it, it, it's 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 you know, it's people processing technology. That's that's the, that's, that's the you know the order of importance when it comes to you know um, change management and innovation. So, yeah, I think that's uh, that's kind of and over the years, you just kind of hear it consistently, and then you see the benefits of doing something one way, and then you become like, you know, firefighters, right? And it's like, okay, how can I be more proactive? How can I think through these things? What, what does planning look like? You know, how do I, how do I shift my mindset? You know, even though everybody's going, going left, you know, I think I should go right. And how do I stay that course knowing that everybody else is going left, right? And, and right. I think those are sure. challenges that you have to have within yourself uh, and, and have confidence that, okay, I am making this the right decision. Uh, and if I don't, you know, what did I learn from it? Right. And it's kind of the, the retrospect we talk about in the lean in lean community. Um, and then taking that information and then iterating it over and over again to where you can just improve your skill set. Yeah. What do you see as the, the biggest benefit to that mindset for your department? I, mean, I would say definitely the flexibility because we, you know, we don't know what comes. We don't software changes, products come, products are different, unique. I mean, there are times where we're really starting from scratch on, on a, a, a initiative. Let's say we're 
we're going to implement uh, virtual reality into our safety program. Okay, well, how do we do that? You know, uh, we just start Googling safety in VR and see what comes up and see what other people do. And, and then we gotta take that, the, the concept of what you know, maybe another company or another industry has done and then figure out how does that work with inside our company? How does that work inside our employer? What's the value that they're going to see um, from mm -hmm. that? And so it's just, and then you kind of, you know, we go to, we go to the, uh, we go to the the workshop and just kind of start, you know, innovating <laughs> and trying yeah. different things and, and, you know, trying different plat software platforms and trying different headset, hardware plat uh, uh, headsets and, or, you know, what do we look at? Let's look at drones and how do we, how does that fit to the big picture? And so it, it's fun. It, it's exciting from that standpoint, but I think, you know, the challenge for our team always is how do we stay, how do we stay motivated to keep going when we, you know, when we're, we don't necessarily know what the end looks like. Um, right. Um, how do we, and that's why it's a, it's a team, we always talk about it's a team effort. Uh, we, you know, VDC, we can't accomplish any of this by ourselves. One person can't accomplish any of this. So the team collectively, what can we do um, to support each other and motivate each other to keep going? And uh, I think that's what's made it successful so far. Um, when when we're truly collaborating uh, mm -hmm. amongst our team members and we're I mean, communicating officially, whether that's through um, a visual um, um, avenue or whether that's uh, listening um, better to hear the problems that the, the team members are having out in the field or in, in the office, um, and then and then coming back and, and showing uh, a solution that's beneficial for them and provides them value has uh, has made it successful. And so that's how, you know, for us, we grow into other areas where you know, our QC department will reach out and say, hey, I need support with this. Or our, or our IT team will say, hey, I'm thinking about using this technology. Can you try it within what your workflows are and see if it makes sense? Um, mm -hmm. those are, those, that's when I feel like we're, um, we're really at our at the top of our game, right? And I think, Part of that comes back down to, uh, you know, it, you know, we 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 establish that level of trust um, uh, within our within our company because uh, they they know what to expect from us now. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so I want to shift gears a little bit, Cliff. I, I know mentoring younger students and really bringing them into the industry is important to you. Why do you think it's worth the investment there? I. It's, it's a it's a passion for mine because you know growing up, you know I, I uh, you know I feel like I was that kid. You know I, I, was, I, was, like, I was a kid that you know didn't you know I wasn't a bad kid by any means. I just didn't know what I did, what to do, or how it worked, or anything like that. Um, yeah. So you know, and, and, it, and I had so many mentors in my life um, in various different levels that helped me. Um, you know, stay on the course, uh, you know, challenge me, um, uh, push me to limits that I didn't think I could even go at the time. And and so I feel like now that I have an opportunity um, um, to do the same thing to the younger generation, um, it, it's, it's that's part of my duty as, as a citizen. <laughs> I guess I just, and, and I enjoy it too. So it's not, it's not, you know, it's not, I don't feel like, like it's actually work. Uh, I mean, anytime I have an opportunity to go talk to some kids, uh, in, in, in school and, and tell them about my background and, and how I and how I got to where I got to or what I do on a daily basis and, and to see their their faces just light up with excitement um, and, and knowing that you know you know we're, while we're talking for an hour you know maybe just maybe I give them a glimmer of hope that they can potentially you know achieve whatever they are destined to achieve in the world um, I think that's just it's just so important. Uh, and so I, that's why I, I do it. That's why I think it's, I encourage it uh, <laughs> to other people that do it. And, and I, you know, and anybody knows that I'll, I can, uh, if I can help, I'll help out anyway. Can. Yeah. I love that. Uh, sharing the, the passion that is, is very obvious there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Pollen has gotten to me here. Right. <laughs> we are in a uh, full pollen season here oh, in yeah. Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Cliff, uh, what do you see as kind of the, um, those, those spark moments that, that grip younger people's, uh, imagination about the construction industry? I think, I think, um, what I've seen is, you know, the, the unknown, I think, you know, you know, the, 
and as a young kid, they think of construction and it's, you know, maybe the um, um, woman or man that's in a hard hat out on the job site and the bulldozer and, or, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, coming in and, you know, and I'm showing them um, robotics and 3D models and, 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 and drones and that they're just like, I didn't realize this is a, a part of technology. Oh, this is a part of construction. So, mm -hmm. you know, 15 years ago, this really wasn't part of construction, um, but the industry has has uh, matured and grown and, and it's, it's, it's kind of almost even exploded, I would say, uh, with technology and, and you can still, you don't have to sit behind the desk all day, you can still go out to a job site, uh, but at the same time, you can integrate technology or you can look at technology or, you know, you're, you're very good at, you know, uh, um, I don't know, whatever games kids play <laughs> these days and you take that same uh, passion that you have for that uh, game and, 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 and make it a career out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that if you, you know, but I think for kids, especially in, in the areas um, where, you know, you don't see a lot of engineers um, um, or a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, your, your stigma is like, oh, you have to go to college and just be a doctor or just be a lawyer. Uh, mm -hmm. At least that's how it was when I was growing up. You, you didn't, you didn't get the oh, you can go get an engineering degree and be, uh, you know, work in construction and you do technology. That wasn't really a career path that was being taught uh, in school. So uh, for right. me, it's just given, you know, there's so many these kids are so smart and they're so talented and a lot of times they, they have a, a thirst for knowledge if you if you provide it to them. Um, so to me, it's just showing them, showing them the possibilities, uh, one, and mm -hmm. then just, you know, making sure that they have an opportunity to be say, as successful as they possibly can be. And again, for me, it's, it's I, and, I, and I look at some of these kids and I, I just see uh, my, myself in them and, and how, you know, I, it was just, you know, I was fortunate. I was, I was fortunate and I was blessed to, to be able to have people that, that care. And a lot of times these kids just want somebody to, somebody to, to love them and care for them and, 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 and again, you know, they, 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 they appreciate, you know, what I call it tough love. I mean, it's, I, uh, I, I did, I had, a, I was with they bring Big Brothers Big Sisters for probably 12 years. Um, um, my little brother is 19 now, so he's, he's officially out of the program, but I was, we still have a great relationship. And, and over the years, you know, he just, it, you know, it, it's, you know, a little bit kind of, well, I was doing warm up to me and, and build that that bond we had but we you know we, we had so much in common that it was just it was naturally uh well went well for us we both like basketball we both like certain types of foods we, we could just sit and talk we could you know we, we would do we would go to um you know different places around uh, uh las vegas and, and just and, and just enjoy each other's company with no restrictions, not like no pressure to do anything. We just talk and, you know, if he was having a bad day or wanted to talk a bit about something he, and I would just listen, you know, without any judgment, you know, but then I would yeah. give him my background, my, my story of a very similar situation when I was his age. And, you know, and, and he, so then he can relate to these are these, you know, things that you are dealing with as a teenager are natural, <laughs> right? You know, struggles in school or girls, whatever, they, whatever his issues are. Yeah. You know, but if you stay focused and, and, and you and you do what's right, um, you will be successful. If you work hard, you'll be successful in anything that, that you do. And, and just hearing that message consistently over and over again, you know, and not just as, you know, something that's like threatening, but more as a supportive push to be um, as, as, as great as they possibly can be. So, and that, that's for me, just something that, and just to look back and, and see that impact and, and, and know that, you know, you, you did the right thing. For me, it's the right thing, um, the time. Uh, it's just exciting. I just love it. <laughs> I just absolutely love yeah. it. <laughs> that's awesome. I, I think it's so incredibly impactful, just sh simply showing up and just being there for, yeah. for somebody. And, you know, I think that eventually it, it's going to build that genuine uh, affection and that you really are genuinely going to care for them and their and their well being and what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. And it's you know, and it's like to me, I mean, communication is a big part of that. Still, it's just you know, the 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 listening and understanding part of communication, I think, is so critical. The uh, um, you know, the uh, I, I go and talk to kids and they just they just are just going a thousand miles a minute and just want to tell 
tell you about what they're working on and what they're doing. Or the other week, I went to uh, uh, I was um, uh, with a uh, what's the name of the gentleman by choice is the name of the um, uh, program, and they have uh-huh. about ten to twelve uh, boys on a Saturday morning, probably about eight o'clock in the morning, and we were putting together. Um, it was construction week, so we were there putting together a, like a toolbox and. And just, you know, some kids were just getting in, some kids weren't getting it. And there was, I saw this one kid, he was kind of struggling to figure out how to get the hammer and the nail to work together. So <laughs> spending some time with him and just kind of walking him through and, and, and just, you know, and by the end, he got it. He, like he was kind of figuring it out. And just, mm-hmm. you know, at first he was like, you know, what do you want? Leave me alone. And, you know, but at the end, he, you know, he was like, we were high fiving it and just, you know, and it was just, it was good, and that's what you say. Like you say, just being being there, being present, uh, being available for for these kids um, um, is 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 amazing. But mentorship goes beyond, you know, obviously just you know in the communities is an important important part. But I feel like you know internally here at Pencil, we we have mentorship um, mentoring unofficial mentoring programs as well. Uh, I think that's one of the things that we should need to work on to make it more um, more streamlined and more available to more people. Um, but yeah, you just, you know, people, 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 people are like gravitate to people who care about you and they have, you know, and they want to talk through things and especially when they're having stressful moments and if you're just there, it's, it's, it's a cool when I just, a random person has, can, hey, can I, can I get five minutes of your time? And, you know, I tell people all the time, my door is always open, so please feel free to come on in. And, and yeah. a lot of times they don't necessarily, they're looking for an answer, they're just looking to, <laughs> to as like you said, has somebody that's right. present for them and, and and can understand what they're potentially going to and know that they have support. Uh, so that's it's just it's just it's just important. And again, I think I, I, I go back to my experiences and all the people that helped me to get to where I'm at today. And it, without them, I, I I don't think I'd be here. So for me, it's 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 extremely important to be able to give back. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, well, Cliff, how do people get a, a hold of you and find out more information? So uh, Pensability Group is a, uh, a, a general contractor, uh, main office in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, we have regional offices in uh, Southern California and Arizona. Uh, we, uh, our, we do uh, revenue is roughly around anywhere between um, six to nine hundred million uh, a year. Uh, and we have uh, our uh, markets are hospitality, gaming, uh, tribal, um, healthcare, education, public works, and uh, and it's uh, and our our we have an in-house VDC department uh, of currently five people, and uh, we uh, we uh, provide you know them services, laser scanning, uh, drones, um, and we support our pre-construction uh, and operations teams. Um, I uh, am available on LinkedIn, uh, um, so uh, Cliff Cole. Uh, um, Penta Building Group on LinkedIn. Uh, feel free to reach out to me, uh, uh, message me, uh, and uh, I'm still on social media. <laughs> that, that I do, but uh, yeah, I, or hopefully, uh, you know, we'll get back to traveling here soon. And I, you know, I try to uh, make as many conferences as I can. So I'm looking to hopefully meet more people in person here. Uh, That's right. Hopefully, sometime this year. <laughs> <laughs> sometime this year, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, definitely miss the old, the old, that interaction, that personal interaction with people. Yeah, for sure. Well, last question for you. What does innovation mean to you? Uh, so innovation for me, to, to me, it's, it's a, um, anything that's new uh, or improved or unique um, um, as far as um, change. Um, so mm-hmm. I think you, it's, it's, you can't, can't say the same and be innovative. Um, but if you're, if you're pushing out a new process or a new invention, uh, or you're you're taking existing invention and making it better, or or unique, something that may not be you know uh, better, but it's something that's different. Uh, so innovation, um, innovation for me is you know that developing that the way mindset um, first to be able to create um, uh, something that that is that is looked as innovative. Mm-hmm. Nice, well, Cliff. Thanks so much for taking the time. I really enjoyed the conversation. Uh, Thank you. It was definitely my pleasure.